What's up YouTube, it's BizBro, and today I'm gonna to be taking you through a build order breakdown featuring Kiljardi's Byzantines. He's been tearing it up with the Byzantines. And this game specifically, specifically I'm gonna be showing you how you can beat the Japanese, which I think is a very tough matchup for the Byzantines. And I think Kiljardi has a very nice strategy that you guys are gonna like if you are struggling with this matchup. If you're looking for more Byzantine strategies, I've got guides on the channel. Make sure you subscribe and leave me comments below because it all helps me out in what I do. Thanks for watching and let's get into this. So the first thing we're going to see Kiltrady do is start off with two villagers on his stone. Okay, he's going out with his scout, he's got his villager queued up, and he's gone for a sheep opening. Now we've seen some openings where maybe you open berries or you do a 2-2-2, two, 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 right? Two to stone, two to gold, two to food. He started off just two on stone and then pulling one food villager to build a cistern that's going to cover both his gold and his stone outcropping. Now, he will be obviously moving to gold here soon, but what he's doing is allowing himself to age up uh, rather quickly by not starting out on the gold, just starting with two on stone. So going to be building a house at home with his uh, sheep villagers. And I'll go into the caster mode just so you can see the split just a little bit as we get into it. Kiljardi's here on the right side. And both these players, they are within the top 100 very, very good players. And I also want to point out, I believe this was part of uh, the War Chief Club, uh, which is a tournament series. You should check it out. Um, so I did want to call that out because somebody mentioned that when I was showing this on stream. Okay, so he's gone with six villagers on food and only now sending a villager to gold. So it was two to stone, six to sheep, and he's now sent one out to stone or to gold. So not very difficult to remember. And uh, in fact, a little bit easier than doing the openings where maybe you start with a villager on gold or a villager on stone. And he's scouting. And uh, I'll give this a little bit of a speed for you. So two on gold. And now we'll see as additional villagers will be going to food. Okay. So that's all we've got so far. And once he has enough stone, he has placed down a cistern and he's going to be pulling his villagers off of the stone to build that. So he has the tier two cistern, which remember when you get that tier two, that's going to give you a 10% gather rate bonus for your villagers, but also going to give you a 40% military production rate when you get to your military buildings online when you hit the feudal age. Okay, so you can see right now, just continuing to rally villagers to uh, sheep. He's got an out and around pattern here. This is uh, Dry Arabia, by the way, very standard map. So staying on the sheep, and we see the opponent going for a curious storehouse, and very common with the Japanese, right? They're going to go for likely either a fast castle or a two town center opening. So one of those things is what you're usually looking at uh, with the Japanese. We'll see what Matisse does in this game. But for right now, Kildrati continuing to rally to food. He's got nine on there right now. I'll give it a little bit more speed for you. Gone back to stone, by the way, after he finished building those cisterns. Just now, he's got the food, and he's aging up about 255. He set that down, okay? So he's pulling four villagers off of food. Going to be building the Imperial Hippodrome. That's going to be his age up option. Leaving some villagers on his food, and only now rallying onto wood. So it's six on food, new villagers going to wood. And the reason why he's leaving a few villagers on food is because his goal is to make a ton of horsemen when he hits the next age. If you pull too many of your villagers after, off of wood, which sometimes you do if you're going for maybe a town center opening, or maybe you're going to be going to the berries really early, uh, if you do that, you end up not having the food to keep a constant production of those horsemen as well as your villagers. So in this case, he's got six on food, new villagers rallied to wood. He's kept his villagers that were on gold. He's kept his villagers that are on stone. So nothing to change there. And I'll give that a little bit of speed for you. Now we've got more villagers going to wood. Now he has three on to wood. We'll show you his scouting pattern so he can, he's found out where is the stone, where is the gold, kind of know where he might try to raid. Okay, so just now he has built his third cistern right when he's been able to afford it. He actually pulled, it looks like one of his food villagers to build the cistern and one of his food villagers to build the house because he has plenty of food banked right now. No lumber camp yet. He's just been purely on the straggler tree. And in fact, I think he might have smushed out some of his other uh, straggler trees, maybe on accident, <laughs> most likely. And now he'll just be setting down his lumber camp and he's, he's got exactly the macro he needs to queue up a horseman as he hits the next age 100 food and 20 wood there you go spinning those resources so going to be getting this horseman and let's see where he's put his rally point he's gone out here towards the gold okay so he's kind of scouting trying to see what is the japanese doing if we peek we see there's a lot on stone so this is going to be a 2tc 
opening for Japan, most likely. He's got horsemen in queue, and you can see, look at the food macro. Very, very important. Uh, you gotta have a lot of villagers on food. You only need a little bit on wood, because these things only cost 20 wood. If your goal isn't to drop down, you know, the, the mercenary house or a barracks or something right away, you only need a little bit on wood. And so he's very carefully planned out this macro. I got the tier three cistern, so he's currently getting a 60% training uh, buff on the speed of those horsemen. And after he's trained two horsemen, you see he just picked up the exploratories upgrade. That's at your stable right here at the hippodrome. And so that means if he kills a villager, he gets gold, and it also does some additional damage. So it makes him very, very good at raiding. So there's that uh, town center. As the Japanese typically do, they set it very defensive. He's not able to really pick up any damage on villagers here, but he's applying a little bit of pressure to the town center. Okay, gonna actually dive in there, try to pull, get a little bit of idle time, but not going to get a whole lot of value, but he's going to stay persistent. Um, we see still training horsemen. Um, and now look at his macro. 10 on food, 8 on wood. Hasn't removed from the gold. Hasn't removed his 2 from stone. Just keeping those working because with this he's able to add more cisterns. He's able to get gold that he can use for upgrades. And he's going to be dropping down an archery range on the front line. Typically when you show horsemen, your enemy's most likely going to show some spearmen. So he's got some archers out here ready to counteract uh, the likely spearman he's going to face on the other side. And he's actually able to get a little bit of siege in on that forge uh, that's outside of the town center range. So, not a major value, but certainly something that he can kill and it's nice to do so. Okay, now has the archers and uh, Hunter's town center just staying on the sheep, uh, staying on the wood. Uh, he did pick up, by the way, his lumber preservation. That's his first uh, wood upgrade. So he did pick that up, so He's got a lot of villagers on wood right now. He's reaping the benefits of that, able to spend a little bit of that gold. Now dropping a mill, I think you're going to see him pick up the wheelbarrow next. It's going to cost 150 gold and 50 wood. So he's just getting those techs, just being annoying over here, using these and assuming like, oh, your opponent's either going to make units or if he doesn't, he's going to lose this building, maybe lose a villager. And does he get it? Uh, just barely. Yes, there we go. Kills a villager, does a little economic damage to his opponent, keeps it a little closer up here, and he gets a little bit of gold for himself. That's quite nice as he's trying to get the wheelbarrow out, and now he's got enough to queue up at this wheelbarrow tech. He's got 150 gold and 50 wood to get that, and I'm assuming we're going to see that queued up here soon. And now he's got a few archers starting to come across the map, also setting down his fourth cistern. And one thing I've noticed watching a few Kildredi games, he typically will expand either his third or fourth cistern towards the hunt, the, the, the closest deer. Deer's going to be a faster gather rate than going out to the berries. And a lot of times you see Byzantine players gathering berries for the mercenaries, but maybe that's really just a trap. It's hard to play a lot, give a lot of pressure because you're getting less food if you're gathering berries. So he goes for this, going to get increased gather rate on the deer. And when he plays with this and makes so many horsemen like he does, he's able to apply pressure and keep his opponent kind of pinned down and give him the room to come out here to start gathering from the deer. So we'll see that soon. Okay, and now we've got a blacksmith being dropped down. He has queued up his wheelbarrow. Probably would have queued that sooner if he had just noticed it. But uh, that's essentially what he's done. Kept villagers on gold. He, in fact, did add a third villager at some point. You can see right now, 16 on wood, 9 on food. And that's because he's starting to really produce these archers. They've cost 50 wood, so a little more wood intensive now. And now, since his opponent's kind of, like, not responding, right? He's gotten the kind of the naked 2 TC while well, I'm going to sit under my TC route. Well, Kildredi has enough horsemen that he's going to pop Triumph. That's the ability at the Hippodrome. And now his horsemen have increased speed. They are hit. Killing. And look at that. One, two, three. Look at all the villager kills he's able to grab here. And that is absolutely excellent. Um, look at the villager difference. He's been on 2 TC and he is just about, just barely ahead of Kildredi now. He did lose, what, a two, three horsemen maybe in that fight, but got some really good villager kills. And that's nice when you are not on 2 TC against a 2 TC opponent. Okay, so. Gets a good raid in, and as you can see, Japanese really doesn't have a whole lot to show now. He's got his 2TC up and a lot of military production, so he's getting ready to get in the game. Um, you can kind of expect to see something soon. He's just checking the food, waiting. You know, they're going to run out of food eventually. Force them onto farming, which Japanese are okay with farming. They're getting their free farms back there, but these are always going to be a nice target. The outskirts of this storehouse, always going to be a nice target to raid, because you know there's probably going to be a villager there. And meanwhile, look at the army mass. Since he started training his army sooner, he's going to have a bigger mass, and he's out on the deer. So he's gathering food quite quickly, um, and going to be able to afford now, look, two archery ranges. He's got a 
uh, blacksmith getting some ranged armor so he can sustain these raids even longer. And his opponent finally starting to make a few units, but he's just going to run away. So the ball is kind of in Kildrati's court right now. He's been able to deal out some economic damage back at home, just pumping units, spending every resource he's got into constant double archer production, horseman production. He's actually going heavier into the archer production now because when you show such heavy horseman presence early, you can bet your opponent's probably doubling down on quite a few spearmen and you can really turn that around with the archers, but he hasn't really shown the archers yet. He's kind of keeping it in his back pocket, waiting for kind of a timing attack. And you see just now at about 10 minutes, 30 seconds, he has picked up siege engineering. So he's now ready to build these Herosophons. Remember for the Byzantines, these do cost a little bit of gold for your fire ramp. So 250 wood and 100 gold. So he's at a point now, look at the army count. He's got a nice, uh, a nice uh, lead and though his opponent kind of has a, a, a villager lead it's going to take time for him to pay off and time for him to produce the army that he's going to need so there's kind of a window that's opening up here for Kujardi to go either for the attack or to go for an H up but he's uh, secured plenty of uh, map control and there we go we've got our first Herosophon being trained he's going to go in for a little bit of a raid there's archers perhaps no just taking a look at what's going on Back at home, adding down his fifth cistern right now. So that's going to be uh, the full bonus. He puts that so he's covering, extending over all of the wood there as they're getting just a little bit out of range of that first one. And then that'll also, of course, extend to this. It'll extend to the gather rate out here on a deer. And he hasn't committed to too many villagers out of there. So um, he's got enough food for right now. He can't get raided too hard if a raid does come in. And look at this military mass. He is a little bit down on villagers, but... This is his opportunity to strike, right? He's got a nice group of units. He's got some rams. He's getting his ranged upgrade. He's got uh, ranged armor. And now he's ready to go for an attack. And he's looking to start to target the outskirts of the Japanese base. Okay, so Matisse facing down the Rosathon. You can see how quickly, this is not sped up. Look how quickly that takes down that building. And he actually almost stops this upgrade, which is kind of crazy. It'd been just a little bit sooner, but he didn't know that, right? Okay, so down goes uh, the forge for the Japanese. Now he's going to move up to the town center. Now uh, Matisse kind of knows like, okay, big push coming. He's been massing spearmen, massing horsemen, but look at this. He has run out of food. Uh, Kildrady's plan has basically worked out, worked out. He's kept him off of this food expansion for a while, but he's just now saying, oh crap, I better build a wall. And he's doing so, but... Kiljardi now, not even really concerned with the raids, he's focusing this main attack, and this is going to become a bigger problem. As you see, a second Herosophon coming in, these rams can dish out so much damage so quickly. So he's going to be trying to hold this, and as you see, military count, even though he has no spearmen really in here, and actually he is starting to add spearmen in. After he gets a lot of archers, he finally does drop a barracks, and I have noticed he likes to mass archers, then add in uh, the, the Matanai, the, the barracks. So going after that town center, see Matisse trying to hold on there, but archers able to uh, extend plenty of fire anytime they get close. And that town center now uh, at just below half health, and he's doing quite a lot of work, also now building his third Herosophon. Okay, and now the, the horseman once again trying to get after that nice little micro to keep his rams alive. Takes down a stable, and he's working that town center. There's villagers on the other side repairing, spending resources. He finally will kill one of the rams. But it's okay. He's got another one on the way. Any spearmen that were maybe going to try to fight these horsemen, well, good luck. There's a, what, 31 uh, archers? 31 archers, and he's only got a few samurai. The samurai can become a, a little bit of a problem, but when you have this many archers and this many horsemen, you can actually take on the samurai with a little bit of kiting. So, loses a few of his horsemen there in the fight. Finally going to pop the uh, triumph ability, but most of his horsemen are already dead. Um, so Matisse has kind of made a decision, okay, I need to try to hold this, pulls a lot of villagers, but ultimately loses his town center, which is kind of, kind of crazy there. And, uh, look at this, eight military count left for Matisse, 33 for Kiljardi. This has been a great fight. He's taken out a town center and Matisse may be up in villagers, but look at his economy right now. He's really spent all of his resources and doesn't have a lot to show with it right now. Those villagers aren't going to fight off the Byzantine army and Kilcharty is doubling down. You see four Herosophons checking in back at home. He's got villagers doubled up on gold because he's been pumping out those Herosophons. He wanted to make sure he could, he could afford this. He's got villagers on wood in gold primarily is what's been going on here. And only now going to move out to the boar as he realizes he's kind of had a, uh, a drought in his food, but luckily most of his resources going into food and uh, are into gold and wood right now for these ramps. 
Okay, so this is a nice spot. Japanese tend to a lot of times build their barracks towards the front of their base, but typically they're trying to play aggressive against the, the Byzantines, when a lot of times Byzantine players will try to play this like economically. And I really like Hilko Girardi just plays this offense, 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 offense. I mean, he has not let off the gas since he hit Feudal Age. With those raids we saw early on, I mean, the, the economy spread looking really good from a teaser now, but I mean, those eight villagers he picked up early, really was able to uh, help him uh, sustain this and keep Matisse kind of on the back foot. And look at this, he's just laying waste to the infrastructure. He really can't produce an army, having to spend all these resources back here. He's already out of wood, and he's pushed him back here, going around, taking out... Okay, now he's had an insult to injury, going for the houses. I mean, Kiljari's in such a good spot. Matisse has been forced to make archers to try to counter the archers, but he just can't mass uh, match this mass right now. And you see now he's going for the landmark town center picking up the boar he's got no risks of raid really right now out on the berries by the way i will note it's been what 15 minutes and he's just now getting mercenaries going with the keshiks but isn't that very interesting how long how late he has delayed getting his keshik he did have his first batch out here just a little bit earlier than this but i think this is a good kind of lesson to show you that you don't need to rush getting the mercenaries out it's going to slow down your food economy. You're just as well off securing your food sources by pumping out horsemen, going for a little bit more profitable deer or even the boar um, earlier on when you're able to apply pressure against a lot of opponents who like to play uh, turtly. And look how much damage here Matisse's or uh, Kiljari has been able to do. I mean, Japanese a very good defensive uh, civilization as well when you think about it. But look at this Hirosophon, just so hard to bring down. And now his archer mass looking really, really good. Matisse is going to make one less effort. I'm going to give it a little bit of turbo here for you. And look at this. He's just not able to get close. He pulls the rams. I mean, look at the town centers are going to go down. He almost gets it. Saves it at the last freaking second. But at what cost? He's losing all of his villagers. He's losing all of his army. And there's one more ram to finish the job. Kiljardi is able to take out that town center. Matisse is out town centers. And he calls GG. I hope you guys enjoyed this build order breakdown of the Byzantines versus the Japanese. Let me know if there's a matchup that's given you struggles out there, and I'll see if I can cover that one as well. If this was helpful for you, consider subscribing to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and leave me a comment. I hope you check out some of my other Byzantine guides on the channel. I've got some fun cistern rushes on there if you haven't seen those. And other than that, I will see you in the next one.